the relationships that we form are, are important and they, they may bear fruit in the short term, medium term or long term. But this idea, I don't know if, if, if I don't know if this is an original idea, but I always feel like in my brain, I'm always interviewing, I'm always making an impression. And those relationships, uh, to your point in your story, they, they mattered because you built relationships with faculty and then those relationships actually turned into a specific conversation to open up a door for that job. Um, you know, your, your proficiency, great, but the relationship was key. And then how that's kind of translated over time to you actually starting a business about relationships. So yeah. t talk a little bit about how, 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 how did that happen from, from kind of getting to Dallas and doing, doing writing and, mm -hmm. and PR stuff to, to this transition of having a company where it's, it's really focused on relationships and connecting talent uh, to need. I'd love to hear the story sure. of how, how the company started. It's awesome. Well, um, yeah, I spent almost a little over 30 years in the in media sales. I was pretty successful at it, but I got to the point where I was old enough that uh, I realized most of the people in the business were younger than me, and I got tired of being looked on as a, as a dinosaur. And about that time, my, my darling wife, who's much smarter than me, said, you know, you keep helping people find jobs. Why don't you start getting paid for that? And I thought, well, that makes sense. So I had a good friend I worked with at uh, Texas Monthly who uh, had gone to work for this recruiting firm in Houston. Uh, and he said, you know, you, you'd be really good at this because you've got all these contacts and know all these people. And, you know, it seems like a natural for you. I want you to, I want you to meet our president and the founder of the company. So uh, I did. <laughs> had a nice conversation with this guy. And at one point I said, you know, I, it's been my experience over the years that in dealing with uh, executive recruiters or headhunters, if you will, uh, most, most of you guys are direct descendants of horse thieves. And he says, without hesitation, that's why someone like you who's honest and has integrity will do really well. And I thought, all right, that's a nice answer, Silver Tongue. So I went to work for this guy. I liked him a lot, and he, and he taught me a lot. And, uh, and the company made me a senior partner after a year and a half. So I was rocking along doing well. I was making good money. But the company, you know, because it was in Houston, most of its work was in the energy sector. So uh, I, I decided to leave and, you know, hang out my own shingle and, and start uh, start a company. Uh, and I have a partner today who's uh, somebody I actually worked with at the Wall Street Journal in the 70s. So we specialize in, uh, in recruiting people for marketing communications jobs. So our, our clients tend to be ad agencies, media companies, any company that spends a lot of money on advertising and marketing, uh, and that includes senior sales and sales management people. So, you know, we, uh, we, we, talk, to, we talk to two kinds of people every day. Uh, we talk to people who want to hire us to find a very specific person or a group of people. And then I talk to a lot of people who, you know, need help in finding a job. And, you know, there are more of them than the other one. But I, you know, I talk to I, anybody who you know calls me and says, you know, can you give me a little help? I talk to those people. I, first of all, I believe in karma. I think somebody up there is keeping score, and God knows I need the points. Uh, but I also think that you know, at a senior level, if somebody needs my help to find their next opportunity, they're going to remember that I help them. And when they need to hire somebody, they're going to remember me and, and give me a call. Uh, so that's worked out well over the last, I don't know, the last four or five years. I would say that. 80% of our business has come from repeats and referrals. So something's working right. Mm -hmm. that, that, that answer your question? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I mean, but it, I think one of the things that's just really unique, and as we've kind of talked over the years, and you've just been so generous with your time and, and help and connecting our students to, to roles and mentoring, is, is this idea. And it, it's become kind of a theme in, in previous episodes of Level Up that we've had when talking to people kind of at the top of their game. They talk about uh, people that were important in their professional journey that helped them along the way in, in some sort of mentoring or resourcing uh, way. Could you, could you talk a little bit about that? Like, uh, you know, were there people that invested in you um, in, your, in your journey, maybe earlier on in your journey, and what do those investments kind of look like and what fruit came from that? Because you are that well, person now. Yeah, I had, the first job I had at the Wall Street Journal, I had a marvelous boss who really gave me great training, great perspective. You know, really, you know, we, we, we'd finish a meeting and he'd, uh, he'd 
give me a download. He'd say, all right, this is what you did right. This is what you could have improved on. You know, you can always do better. Uh, but he was very supportive. And as, uh, as I moved around in the media business, uh, I, I managed to find people like that, you know, good bosses and even the occasional bad boss. You know, I learned what not to do. Uh, so, and, you know, and a lot of it was, you know, having establishing relationships with the people I worked with, uh, not only on my team, but, you know, and, and the customers. And yeah, I've, I've, I think I've told you, I, I have a practice, which I've had pretty much my whole career. Every day I talk to one person who I don't really have any reason to talk to, other than to say, hey, how you doing? How's your kids? How's, how's your wife doing? What, how's the new job coming up for you? Uh, and, and that keeps me amazingly connected. And, you know, people who joke that I, you know, I know everybody. Uh, obviously, I don't know everybody. But, you know, as I tell people, if I don't know them, they're, maybe they're not worth knowing. Uh, but that's how I've you know kind of established this network. And as a recruiter, you know I have a network that uh, reaches you know, across the entire country, and even even some international work. Well, and that that goes to the point, you know, like right now it's been trendy for years now on productivity and you know uh, all these kind of books with seven steps to this and pract you know practices like ways to stay organized or all of these you know productivity tips and tricks and even 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 especially in in pandemic and post pandemic setting up your home office and all of those kind of rhythms. But I think I think to your point, something that you've done for years that not a lot of people do is as people are thinking about developing those rhythms of, of uh, you know, of getting up extra earlier, or reading something or a meditation or those kinds of things to think about uh, a five, five minute window in their day to say, I'm just going to make a five minute call. I'm just going to continue to kind of check in on relationships and, um, and almost that almost that is a commodity. That is a, a measure of wealth is the relationships that we have, you know, over long over, over longevity of life. So I love that that's a that's a practice. And uh, I, that's that's inspiring to me to, to say, you know what, I need to think more about doing that, uh, about making that a practice. It's a, it's something simple. It's not a lot of work, right? No, no, and, and I enjoy it. You know, it just keeps me connected with people, and I, and I enjoy that. 